as we welcome the legendary Matt Kepnes, famously known as Nomadic Matt, with over a decade of globe trotting experience and a wanderlust that has taken him to nearly 100 countries. Matt is here to enlighten us on the trials and tribulations faced by travel bloggers. With Matt's vast knowledge, we'll uncover the secrets to conquering the challenges of the travel blogging world. So I'll just jump into the questions. As we all know, you started your blog. Hi, Matt. Hey. As we know, you started your blog 17 years ago when you had to hand code everything, spend a lot of time figuring out how to move images around, design graphics, create links, and format the site. Could you have imagined back then that years later there would be virtual assistant for bloggers? It's mind boggling, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I mean, WordPress was a real game changer. You know, I, I started when you were still coding websites and a thing called Adobe Dreamweaver. Uh, but WordPress really made it a lot easier because it took, you didn't have to hand code anything, just buy a theme. So, uh, it's very, very, I am thankful for it because, you know, now I can go in and do some minor coding things. Uh, but I'm also... Uh, glad I don't have to always hand code like everything from scratch. Yeah, it absolutely saves a lot of time. Um, and I'm sure you know that from the 17 years that you've been doing this. Uh, yeah. Do you remember? <laughs> yeah. Do you remember how you envisioned the job of a travel blogger when you first started? How much does your expectations coincide or not with the reality of a life as a blogger? And how have they shifted over the last years? Is travel blogging a dreamy life or is it just a lot of hard work? Uh, well, I mean, I started this with no intention of being a quote unquote travel blogger. The goal of the website was to really just be an online resume for freelance writing. I wanted to write guidebooks. But mostly I just wanted to get paid to travel to make enough money to stay on the road, you know? So freelance writing, travel writing, guidebook writing was really just a means to an end. There was no real career path, right? There was no like, I'm going to create this thing that makes money and then this is going to be what I'm going to do. It just happened that way. Um, you know, I, I, where I think a lot of people now, you know, especially in the rise of uh, Twitter, sorry, TikTok and Instagram, you know, they want to be an influencer, right? They set out with that goal of making money online. But back then, that, that nobody even thought about that. It was just, you know, um, it was just kind of like luck. You did it, you know, you did it more for fun than anything else. Um, what was the second part of your question? Do I think uh, travel blogging is my end all be all? Yeah. Do you think like travel blogging is a dreamy life or do you think it's just a lot of hard work? Uh, coal mining is hard work. Blogging is busy work. You know, um, there's, not, like, there's a lot of work that goes involved in, you know, maintaining uh social platforms and writing and updating and SEO. And, you know, I mean, you make one TikTok, it takes like two hours, right? But like, I, I wouldn't say it's like hard work, right? You know, um, but I think, you know, people oversell the amount of work that gets involved. I mean, I, tons of people have courses and programs uh, that I was like, live your best life. Um, you know, but you only see the end product, right? You only see what I want you to see on social media. You don't see the two hours it took me to make, the, you know, that reel or TikTok. And I'm, you know, even people I know who are really good at it, they can spend days going through stuff, you know, editing video. I mean, that's, that's more time consuming than those writing. So, I mean, I, would I say it's a dream job? I mean, there's certainly worse jobs in the world, right? But, you know, I don't, it's no job is as good as you imagine it to be. Every job is work, even the ones you love. Yeah, absolutely. And I definitely agree that you can be a busybody, especially being a travel blogger. Um, 
What does it mean for you to run a business as a blogger? And how should one start making affiliate commissions, preferably quickly? It seems like you've got many income streams funding your business. Can you name a few? <coughs> um, yeah, we, we do affiliates, products, ebooks, uh, ad revenue, uh, speaking gigs, um, webinars, tours, I'll read regular books. I do consulting. Um, so it, it runs the gambit, uh, but a lot of that grows over time, right? You know, it's very easy for people to just be like, I'm going to whip up a how to make money course and then sell it to people. But in the end, that's a, a lot of diminishing returns. You run out of people to sell with, and then, well, you know, you've, have to find something new and then really you're only making money by selling people a course so i feel like those kind of stuff that one comes later in the beginning i you know you really want to focus on creating an audience you don't monetize a website you monetize readers uh so you really need people to buy whatever it is you're selling right click on links uh buy your ebook buy a course buy tours from you you know there's a million ways to skin that cat uh, but you know, I would say put links in from day one, you know, I mean, even if, you know, you only have six readers for the first year, well, maybe one of them will click link a dollar is better than no dollars. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, back in the day, you might say like, oh, wait a little bit, but people are so used now to ads and, you know, everything being an affiliate link and being sold online that it's not so weird to just be like. I make a commission, you know, you, it's kind of expected. Yeah, absolutely. So your audience expects you, expects you to get that back. Yeah. Especially if you're providing content that's helping them um, to travel and know what to expect when they are in these various destinations. Um, in my opinion, and other respondents would agree, one of the most serious problems is social media overload. And we've heard about this multiple times during today's blog society retreat. You have to keep up with news, you know, bloggers, new locations, blog ideas, and several ever growing social media platforms. What do you recommend to new bloggers to do to keep up? I gotta say that this camera inverses everything. So like my left is my right and my right <laughs> is my left here. And it's really confusing me. <laughs> Uh, I, I think it's really easy when you have, feel that you have to be everywhere, but also you, who says you have to be everywhere, right? I mean, I'm not really on video. Um, and I know lots of people on, who are huge on video that don't have blogs. And so you have to really do with, or, or are huge on TikTok, but don't have a YouTube. Uh, you have to go with the platform where you feel most natural on because people will know you're faking it. You know, like I am terrible on video. Uh, like even when I'm like good, I'm real bad because it's just not natural to me and people can sense that, right? Whereas writing, it's a much more natural form of expression uh, where some people are just like, they're naturals on camera, right? They're really good at editing. Like you can just tell like they come, they shine. And so that comes through. So like, it, why would I want to make TikTok reels or YouTube videos? They're going to be bad. I can force myself to do it, but they're going to be bad, you know, and then people aren't going to watch them. Uh, so don't feel like you have to be on every platform just because, you know, it's, it exists. Um, you know, do the platform you love. I like, I like Instagram. Um, and that's the one I kind of focus on. Like we, we repurpose, oh, that reminds me, I can repurpose that. Uh, we repurpose stuff to TikTok from Instagram. I just remembered to po post my reel from yesterday. Um, oh, I have a lot of reels I can put on TikTok. Um, ask my social person about that. Um, but like, I don't really care about TikTok. You know, like, it's like, I care about things that make money, right? And you know, since I don't do a lot of brand partnerships, I would rather focus on creating content on my website where I can get more SEO traffic, more affiliate revenue, uh, and more ad revenue for less time. 
you know, since brand partnerships and social media are not a big part of my business, I don't feel like I'm missing out. So I think it's important to focus on where you feel the most natural and where you feel you can make the most money. Yeah, really great advice. I now, people, let's know people who make millions of dollars a year running uh, random niche travel blogs who have zero presence on social media. They don't even have social media. Yeah, no, that's really true. Um, now, let's pivot up to blogging burnout and strategies that you found helpful for dealing with that. Our research found that one of the most pertinent challenges is feeling discouraged when comparing yourself to more successful bloggers. Did you experience this? And so what helped you overcome this? I mean, I think everyone experiences uh, comparison, right? Like we all, how do you know you're doing good? We always compare ourselves. That's just human nature to say, oh my God, so-and-so is doing this. I'm so far behind. Um, but as they also say, comparison is the theft of joy. And so there will always be bigger people on the internet, right? Uh, like some, you know, someone's going to hit the viral lottery and they're going to grow real quick and they might continue growing or they might stagnate, but the race is long, um, you know, but in the end it's only with yourself, right? The best comparison is, do you have more than you had six months ago? Is your traffic better? Are your conversions up? Do you have more followers? Are you making more money, right? That's it. If, if your metrics are going down, then there's a problem. But if your metrics are going up, who cares if they're relatively going up slower than somebody else or, you know, or, you know, some because you know you there's a Taurus in the hair thing, right? And you might be going up slowly, but I get I start a few viral videos and now I have a million followers, but then I'm like not as successful and I just stagnate. Whereas you keep going up, you know, it's much better to just build a little bit at a time than anything else. And so, like, I don't really care what other people do. I care about what my numbers do. Like, you know, I don't care if some other bloggers, yeah, okay, like, like two seconds of me is like, ah, oh, this person's video went viral and my reel only got 100,000 views, fuck, you know? But like, at the end, but then I move on and then I'm looking at like our Google numbers. I'm like, okay, it went up this month. Like, let's do, or it went down, we watched, figure out, why I went down. I'm more concerned about my own shit than at someone else's shit. Yeah, it makes sense. Ultimately, the work that you do will bring you income and comparing yourself doesn't do anything to help with your income. Yeah, it's just a distraction, you know? Yeah. Um, we have a question from the, one of our attendees. They said they launched their blog in 2007. As a travel blogger, I'm conflicted recommending international travel when we are negatively contributing to climate change, in their personal opinion. Thoughts? To exist is to contribute to climate change. Um, you know, I, listen, I, I don't care. That's my opinion on, on it. Like to exist is to contribute to climate change. I have the AC going. We are on, my computer is filled with uh, rare earth metals that were mined by some, you know, in terrible working conditions, right? Same as this person's computer. I think you should do stuff. You should do what makes you feel good to mitigate the climate change, you know, and fight for, I fully believe it exists. And I think we should, do more on a macro level to, to fight it. But I feel no guilt getting on an airplane. You know, I mean, if I, all you can do is tell people to be better travelers, you know, turn off the lights, reduce plastic consumption, you know, uh, avoid waste, you know. I mean, you think, nobody thinks about it when, you know, when you go into France, right? But like those tourists systems weren't made for 20 million visitors, right? That's 
you know, like little, little towns in the Alps, right? That, that, that piping, that those utility wires are made not with like, oh, 20 more million people in mind. So using, I think about energy consumption, waste a lot in terms of my travels. Uh, but in terms of the macro, like, oh, I'm getting on this plane and has CO2. I mean, for me personally, I don't have that guilt. If that's someone, if that's important to you, yeah, you should write about it, um, you know, but also to exist in our modern world contributes to climate change, you know? I mean, I, I if you look at the actual numbers of, of planes, air for, like CO2 from airplanes contributes less than 2% to the overall numbers. Now, of course, that's skewed because, like, I produce a good chunk of that versus somebody, you know, say in like the Midwest who doesn't travel a lot or somebody in, you know, rural Peru. Um, but like the getting people to reduce meat and just overall waste consumption does way more to reduce climate uh, issues than airplanes. So long story short, I, it doesn't like fire me up. Like, but I think, you know, if that's, a, a, I have friends who are giving up air travel because they feel so strongly about it, you know? And I think you have to do with what you feel. Like I still recycle plastic, even though I know 3% of that actually gets recycled, but it makes me feel good. Makes sense. And if you were starting over in 2023, what would you focus on? Would you focus on being a blogger? an influencer or both? You know, whatever you want to call yourself is really the same thing. You know, I mean, I hate the word influencer because, because it has such negative connotations and like, I think it's kind of an egotistical thing to say, right? Does, you know, and also I said this at a talk in London, it doesn't actually describe what you do, right? You know, when you go to the doctors, is he, does he say, oh, welcome, I'm a medical influencer. He's a doctor, right? Stephen King doesn't call himself an influencer. He's a writer. Now, they have influence over you because they either affect your book buying or your health, how you're going to treat health care, you know, or whatever, right? That is to have influence, to, make, to have, get someone to change their mind. So I think I'm a writer. That's how I, you know, or you're a video person, or you're a photographer, or, or whatever, but I hate the word influencer. Um, so what I would tell someone who wants to start today is, is mostly that do what you want to do, but very specifically. And I, what I mean by that is that when I started back in 2008, there were like 20 blogs. So I could just write about whatever I want to write about, covering the gambit of whatever it is, right? I mean, my website's a general budget travel blog. Uh, if I were to start today, I would one, pick a medium that I love the most. Uh, and then I would pick a topic I love the most and really drill that down to get as specific as possible. You don't need a million people to read your website. You know, you can, do, you can have a whole income with, you know, a few thousand people as long as they're buying your products, you know? I mean, think about like your pizza shop down the street, right? Do they have 50,000 customers coming in over the, you know, a million people? Probably not, right? I mean, my town where, you know, has like 20,000 people in it, where I grew up in, that local deli that is always busy, you know, doesn't have, you know, probably gets a thousand, a couple thousand people. So it's more important to be really narrow uh, and, and, and focus on something specific than just trying to be everything to everyone these days. Yeah, I love that idea, that idea of the pizza shop. Um, it's so true. Um, another question, what resources, books, magazines, et cetera, helped you learn how to travel right? Um. Stephen King's On Writing is really good. Um, Don George wrote a book called 
how to be a travel writer, which is also really good. I have a course on travel writing, just to pitch that out there. It's called Superstar Blogging. Uh, feel free to get it. Um, comes with actual editing feedback. Um, there is a book called The Writer's Journey that is really good. A book called Save the Cat. It's about screenwriting. Uh, that's also really good because it's really just about creating narrative arcs. You really just hire an editor. Um, you know, writing takes practice. And so if you can get someone to edit your work, that's really important. Most bloggers, most creatives don't get outside editing help. And so they never really grow because nobody says you're doing that wrong. And so even if it's just a friend who's like, loves grammar, you know, somebody to read your work is really important. Yeah, very true. An audience member asked, I know my blog won't die if I take a day, week, or even a month off to travel. But even knowing this, I feel like I still can't be fully able to relax and enjoy myself when I try to disconnect. How can I turn it off and enjoy traveling like a normal person again? Like when I did when I was just backpacking without any work to worry about. My question is, when was the last time you traveled without worrying about blogging? Uh, last month when I went to Japan. Nice. I didn't post for a week. I was with my friends. I, you know, this is a constant struggle. I, I mean, I care a lot less. So I think that helps. Uh, after 15 years, I just don't care as much. And so this was definitely a struggle where I always felt I had to be on. And, but, you know, and, and there are days where I'm like, oh, I got to get content. But I don't post in real time. So I think that's something you can do is if you're not posting in real time, there's less of pressure to post now, right? So say, you know, say you're going to Japan next month, right? Well, you know, you can schedule content while you're there, right? And so while you're there, you just have your, you take your pictures and, you know, take your notes. And then when you come home, then, you know, you catch up to it. And, and so you, you still have the content for later, but you don't feel the pressure to post in real time because you, you kind of have stuff scheduled. And again, you know, nobody cares. Like, I think this is really important. People need to learn. Nobody cares about you. We all feel that we are, have that main character syndrome, but you know, we're the hero of the story and, and social media amplifies that. But the reality is every one of your readers lives a day-to-day -day life, right? They're, they got shit going on. And so like, you might feel like the world's not gonna end, right? But like, you still have that creeping feeling like, oh, you know, I got a post, right? You know, like, cause one, you're comparing yourself to others. So you feel like if you don't post, you're gonna lose out to some other creator. But online, stuff isn't a zero sum game. It's not like walking past your pizza place where like you either go in to get pizza or you go in to get, you know, uh, Chinese food, right? Cause you can only eat one meal. People consume tons of cr content from multiple streams. And so like, just cause they saw you, my post on Tuesday and your post on Wednesday doesn't mean that they're going to unfollow me or whatever. And because of the algorithm, People don't even notice, right? And so that goes to my first point. It's like people don't care. They don't notice because they're wrapped up in their own shit, right? So they're not going to notice you're gone for even a week, you know? <laughs> like they may wonder, oh, I haven't seen their content in a while. And, you know, and maybe they search it out. But, like, they want you to live your own life, right? So, like, you just – once you realize people don't care that – you're not posting, you feel less pressure to post, but, you know, because you, you realize, oh, you know, because like, remember, everybody is like yourself, right? You're wrapped up in your own shit. People are wrapped up in their shit, right? You, you know, and so just remember people are like you and, and they're just busy. And so you just enjoy your place. Absolutely. And then what about suggestions you would offer to part-time travelers and bloggers who still have that nine to five? 
Um, I would say that, you know, if you so, he there in that instance, I would say it's much better to have like a local blog because you can update it more, right? So like, let's say you live in, you know, Bozeman, Montana. I'd have a blog about Bozeman because it's way more, you can keep it more updated than you could if it's like a family travel blog, but you only travel once a quarter, right? But you're always in Bozeman. And thanks to the modern internet, uh, you don't need a million people to be successful. You just need to have, like, how much worse fall? Is there a lot of SEO competition for Bozeman? I doubt it. So you have an advantage right there. But it's better to be the expert in one little thing because then you can dominate that field uh, than try to be everything to everyone and have like a generic blog, right? Because um, then, you know, it's, again, if you're not traveling a lot and you just have your local thing, you can start selling stuff to local restaurants. You could do tours. You could, you know, you just get all the traffic. You become the local expert. And there's enough people who go into Bozeman or Missoula or Raleigh or, you know, Lyon, France, wherever you are, that people, um, that there's enough to support you. Absolutely. And what do you do and how do you focus to get back on track when you feel really burnt out and you can't even stand the online world yet the work, all your work is online? Um, I just turn it off and read a book. You know, whether you work online or offline, um, you're still working, right? So the internet is there all the time. It doesn't shut off. And that can be good because you can do work whenever. It can be bad because you always have to feel the need to be online. But I refer you back to my previous answer about nobody cares, so just take some time off. Um, I, I have set hours. You know, I, I, have a, I keep a calendar and a schedule, and the, so I break up my work, and that's when I work. Um, and that can help. Take, get rid of burnout, right? You know, and also try to break up your day. You know, I do work in the morning. When I'm traveling, I do work in the morning. I sightsee. I go back out. Uh, I come back home. I do some work and then I go back out, right? So, and then every few days, I'll just take like a half day or maybe a full day, find the cafe and I'll just work that day. Uh, and, you know, but breaking up your work day is a great way to sort of mentally refresh yourself. You know, get up, go outside, touch grass, get on an airplane and never come back. I love that. I love also touching grass, especially when I'm in my work mode and it's hours and I haven't like actually done anything outside of being in the laptop. Um, last question. What advice would you give aspiring travel bloggers on how to balance the demands of blogging with taking care of their mental well-being? Um, yeah. Again, I, I would say that it's very important to, you know, one, understand that, like, you don't have to be online all the time. You know, two, understanding that everyone's trapped in their, caught up in their own lives. So, like, it's okay, like people aren't gonna like miss you. In fact, if you actually start talking about like, oh, I feel really overwhelmed, like, you know, like people will tell you to just get offline and go do something else. It's okay, they'll be there, you know? Whenever any creator um, posts about mental health, their, the response from their audience is always, it's okay, go chill out. We'll, we'll still be here when you're back. Uh, and two, you know, create, you know, a good schedule, you know, so that, you know, you know, like when is work time and when is not work time, you know, one of the good parts about a nine to five is that when it's five o'clock work ends. And so at creating that time where like work ends, you know, like the day is over, I'm, I'm going out, I'm going to go do other stuff, right. Rather than letting it just bleed throughout the day. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Matt, for joining us today and sharing your wisdom on how you have stayed true to your passion and overcome burnout. 
I hope so. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> no, you absolutely did. Thank you so much, Matt.